Conferences can be fun opportunities to meet people, develop ideas, raise your professional visibility, and get inspired. But conferences can also be intimidating and overwhelming, especially for the average graduate student. In this video, we'll talk about reasons to attend a professional conference, how to decide which one to attend, and how to make the most of your time while you're there. Conferences are a reminder that you are not on your own, and then in most instances, you are not the only person studying or doing the type of work that you do. This can be really important, perhaps, for those of us who are employed in more niche areas, because it's a good reminder to know that there's a wider network available out there to you. Conferences are also a good way to stay informed of the latest techniques and to get new ideas to implement into your workspace or into your research, and again, just to network and meet other folks from your area. Lastly. If you are interested in transitioning to a new field or to a new institution, conferences can be a great way to learn about job openings and to connect directly with individuals who could be potential employers, which can sometimes make the difference between getting a position or not. Conferences come in many shapes and sizes. There are regional, sometimes campus, especially for those of us employed in higher education, or even national if we belong to national organizations. This can make it challenging then to determine where to start or on what level to be involved. For first time goers, a smaller conference may be a good way to break into the conference world because it's easier to interact with other attendees as it can be easier to get lost at a big conference. As a student, you sometimes may also have a better chance of getting to present at a smaller conference, which can offer good practice and visibility that can help you take it to the next level, especially if you are eager to present on the larger national conference level. If you are an active researcher, either as a graduate student or as a working professional, then perhaps you should consider conferences that are related to your field or to your profession. This way you can see how well what you're working on aligns with what might be current trends or developing trends in your field. And it also, again, allows you to connect with others, which may allow you then to branch out your research or your work or to think of new ways of adapting ideas. Conferences can generally be sometimes an expensive endeavor depending on where they're hosted. Even small campus conferences can vary based on size of the institution and the distance that you have to travel to. National conferences can be anywhere in the greater United States. So you may think about traveling with a group of colleagues or other peers to help you cut down on costs. Funding for graduate level travel to conferences does exist at most institutions. However, the level of support that they can extend can vary from place to place. So enacting some cost saving measures might be a good way to try to present at all different types of conferences, regional, campus or national, but just being smart about how you're using the funding that you do have. Conferences are a quickly paced time in your life, and most of them will last anywhere between a day and a half to a single day to perhaps even three or four days. So it can get easy to get exhausted while attending a conference. Some of the ways that you can try to cut down on just that exhaustion is to make a list of the sessions that you want to attend. Most conferences these days have their own dedicated apps and, of course, websites that publish the agenda for the conference. This is then a good way to review abstracts, to review the types of sessions they're providing, and to build out the list of the ones that you definitely want to attend. However, I'd also suggest that you include some conferences that may be outside of your area. A great benefit of a conference, again, is that you are looking for new ideas, and so it can be good to branch out and see presenters that are a little outside of your area. With all of that, make sure you also build in some free time. A lot of conferences will have relaxation spaces or technology free zones. This could be a good chance to just put your feet up, to decompress a little bit, to reflect on the things that you would have learned. And also again, to network with other individuals who are there. If you may be traveling with individuals from your own institution, that's great. Again, that could be a good way to save some money as we talked about in the last slide. But at the same time, take this opportunity to meet people that are outside of your institution as well. For those that you do meet, make sure that you all exchange business cards or other methods of contact information. And then also make sure to follow up with these people that you've met. Conferences are a whirlwind. People forget names and faces, but you will stand out above the crowd if you take the extra step to reconnect and to continue to nurture that relationship. 
If you have any questions about how to locate conferences based on your profession or what you're studying as a graduate student or how to prepare submission materials to be considered for a conference, feel free to drop us an email at the link that you see on your screen. We will be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you and talk about conferences in a little bit more depth.